Hey, great to see everybody right now. God bless you. I'm so excited to be spending this time with you. We're going to just ask, as we do on a regular basis, a true spiritual habit of meditation to actually just stop and take in all the great things of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's actually what you need to do right now with your life. You actually need to stop and uh, hit that pause button and, and recalibrate your life and uh, push away from the table, turn off uh, those media channels that have just all kinds of news blurring at us, no matter how serious those are, you need to take some moments of time to let your life be re-engaged with peace and peace with God. And so that's what we're going to talk about right now as we get into a really interesting time of preaching and teaching about Israel. And so my friends, let me pray, ask God's blessing over you, enjoy a little time of worship together, and then what we have to talk about in Israel, in Romans chapter 11, is absolutely fascinating. And so let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray now that in your name and by your word you would come and be the author of peace and speak life over us. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you lord you bring life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You bring light. You are love, you give light to the darkness, you bring hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs 
So we pour out our praise to you only. Pouring out our praise. We're pouring out our worship. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, We'll shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Oh, Lord, great are you. You're perfect in all of your ways. 
You are so good, so, so good. You are so good to me, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Go in your Bibles to Romans chapter 11, and as you find your way there, let me just share a few thoughts with you. Probably should have done this in the introduction, uh, but I'm right here on the ranch church, ranch church property, the farm and vineyard of the ranch church, and we're actually this time right in front of the winery. Uh, the wind has kind of gotten the better of us, and so we've shifted around. We're actually right in front of the winery, and uh, there's probably going to be some cars moving behind me, and uh, I don't know. There's always kind of interesting things happening around here. Hopefully no animal will eat another animal on the screen or something like that. So uh, anyway, just don't pay any mind to that. We'll be in God's word. And I pray that you could join us here live and in person for some of our most fantastic worship services here at the Ranch Church. Listen, Romans chapter 11 is a really important chapter. I mean, this is no joke because we're gonna get to the bottom line as it just turns out of some of the political things that are going on in the Middle East, uh, some of the political things that have even happened with churches and Christians as they have misunderstood God's plan with Israel. And so chapter 11 starts this way. I ask then, Paul will say, has God rejected his people? Now that's a fascinating comment because remember, Chapter 9 is Israel past, chapter 10 is Israel present, chapter 11 is Israel future, and he's going to work with those thoughts, and all of those principles have significant value to our everyday living. Chapter 10, you know, what's going on with Israel right now is exactly what's going on with us. It's our heart issues before God, as it is the heart issue with them. But at this very moment, the scripture says through Paul, I ask and has God rejected his people? What does it say? He says, by no means. For I myself am an Israelite, which is he's saying, I'm one of you. And now he's going to describe that in short detail. A descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? And so now he's going to use an illustration from the life of Elijah, very important one, <clears throat> excuse me, very important illustration from the life of Elijah. For he's going to say, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. And I alone am left and they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? In other words, what was going on in that circumstance? Is it actually true that Elijah is alone? Is it really true that God has rejected everyone? Uh, no. No. In fact, there's things about God that even Elijah did not know. For the Lord says, I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. In other words, Israel is just like the church and just like people who attend church. You go to the ranch church. I hope you go to the ranch church. I love the fact that you're listening right now. That does not save you. How fascinating is that for me to say as a pastor and a preacher, that attending the church that is based on the word of God and even listening to this does not, through that simple exercise, save you. What saves you simply is Jesus Christ and your faith in Jesus Christ and your willingness 
to repent of your own self, <laughs> really to repent of you and to place your life, as we're going to look at it in chapter 12, as a living sacrifice on the altar before God. So at the present time, the scripture will say, there is a remnant, Paul will say, chosen by grace. For if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Has Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking? No. The elect obtained it, but some were hardened. So there's this spiritual principle, one that humbles me. I've seen versions of it even in my own life as a saved brother in the Lord, that when I say no to God, when I dig in against God, that my own heart can get harder. It's why on Sundays and even at the end of this video, I ask for some sort of prayerful response so that your faith will be exercised so that as you're going, in a sense, to a gymnasium working out, that your faith will be exercised and that you'll experience tremendous, tremendous spiritual power and that you won't have a hard heart. So now let's talk about this. Let's talk about the reality that God has not rejected his people. And I've got to, got to kind of go through some things that I think you're going to really enjoy. So first of all, when we talk about Israel to help you understand the Bible, so we help you understand this much of the Bible, here's what you have to understand. That there were three kings of Israel, and pretty much that's it. And if you studied the Bible, you might find that to be a fascinating statement because there are actually lengthy list of kings. So why would I say there's really only three kings? Well, the first king of Israel is actually King Saul. And that's what we would affectionately call the people's choice. Then the second king of Israel is really the Lord's choice, and that's David. Then the third king of Israel is Solomon, who is mommy and daddy's choice, and that is David with Bathsheba. And after Solomon, there now was a very serious problem. And the very serious problem is with two guys who had a very similar name. And so I'll tell you how I kind of keep it straight in my head. There's Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And so I just nicknamed Jeroboam Jerry. <laughs> I call him Jerry. So Rehoboam is the rightful heir. He was the prince. He is the descendant from Solomon. And he is the one who should have been on the throne. But Jeroboam, or Jerry, he is the general. He's the military general. And he causes a civil war. He goes up north, and this is the whole Samaritan problem. And he kind of replants a type of Jerusalem in an area called Samaria. Now remember, I'm describing this part of the Bible to you. That's what this is all about. There's a civil war, a complete break in Israel. And so at Jerusalem proper, which will now go by the name of Judah, there are two tribes only. There's Judah and there's Benjamin. And Benjamin gets absorbed into Judah, and that's how we know those people. The 10 other tribes bind together and come together up north and they create an, a total false counterfeit spiritual economy to Jerusalem. So they make up their own worship, they make up their own temple, uh, they have their own economic way of doing business and every single one of their kings is terrible, terrible people, just absolute terrible. And the southern kings, there's a few good ones, like Josiah, one of the last truly great kings of Israel, who brings about a fantastic revival. So now stick with me here, because again, I'm getting up to this point where he said, I asked then, Paul says, has God rejected his people? Because of the days of Jesus, when he's walking around, are the days of Roman captivity. And this affects us even to this day, where people think, that somehow God has rejected Israel. He has not rejected Israel. In fact, if God can reject Israel, he can reject you. And that's the point. There's an old covenant called the Abrahamic covenant. It is still in spiritual operation. And there's a new covenant, which is definitely in operation, which Jesus said, this is the new covenant. And he, he authored it right before going to the cross. That is the Passover, the Paschal sacrifice. And he himself will go to the cross and by his own shed blood now allow a new economy called the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins, where forgiveness is final and total and where there's a new birth and a radical transformation in our humanity, where Gentiles now are actively grafted into that Jewish vine. So now some Christians and some churches and some religious systems like Catholicism have outright rejected Israel. 
I mean, that has caused tremendous spiritual problem, and it's a very gross and serious error. And then you've had civic governments that have taken advantage of that spiritual error and have had tremendous, tremendous violent attacks on Jews throughout the history of uh, the New Testament era. And so, so Christians have actually spoken up like I'm doing right now and bringing greater clarity of teaching and sometimes even rebuke to those who disagree with this. No, God has not rejected Israel. And if he can reject Israel, he can reject the Christian and he's not rejecting his own blood and he's not rejecting his own people. So allow me now to explain a few things with greater clarity. Those 10 tribes up north which actually went by the name of Israel. In such rebellion, the Assyrians came down from the north, that's Syria proper and Lebanon. They actually came down and they conquered those 10 tribes to the north. Now the southern two, Benjamin and Judah, for their faithfulness and righteousness, they would, they would last a little longer because they actually had some good kings, uh, but they would ultimately be taken out uh, by the Babylonians. The Babylonians would take out the Assyrians, and then the, they would come down and transplant themselves uh, into Israel. When the, when the Assyrians came down and took out the 10 northern tribes, one of the complicating factors is that they actually took those Jews away, but they actually brought in their own people. So they kind of went like this in terms of refugees. They thought that was a good idea. It didn't work out at all, caused tremendous problems. And so now on the borders of Jerusalem were all these pagan people, and it was, it was just chaos, really. And so from the Babylonian captivity, there's a return into the land. These are the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, actually. And, and, then, and then there's actually the Persians. The Persians are fasting. I love Persian history. I mean, I love Persian history. Always give me a chance to talk about Persian history. My church knows it. My family knows it. I'm a big geek on this side of the street. And so I won't belabor that. Simply said that the Persians came in and took out everyone. And now there's Persian dominance. And then from Persia, you get Greek dominance. And then from Greek dominance, you get Roman dominance. And that's to Jesus. And then afterwards, you get into Rome. And ultimately, Jerusalem is completely destroyed in 70 AD. And uh, life goes on. 1948 is a prophetic mi miracle that the scriptures speak about. And, and they speak about how in 1948, on May 14th to the day, the nation would be reborn. And so Israel is reborn in 1948. That doesn't mean that Israel is a church. It means that they are actually have their own people planted back, they have their own sovereignty back, and that there is a revival coming for Israel. So this scripture here in Romans chapter 11 says that God has not rejected them, but that their heart has actually become hard, just like your heart can actually become hard and that my heart can become hard. And so today's lesson is related to that. Two very basic principles. First, God has not forgotten his promises. He has not rejected you. God has not rejected you. That's the first principle for you to internalize. He continues to have his arms open before you. He continues to pour his love out towards you. He continues to want to bring to you his absolute life of salvation. And then secondly, he has not rejected Israel at all. If God, because God has not rejected his covenant. I guess the third promise that I would tell you is simply that our hearts could become hard. And that's what I want to pray for right now. I'm going to pray for us right now. I'm going to pray that your heart is not hard. Sin will make your heart hard. The devil will harden your own heart. Your own sometimes lack of faith will harden your own heart. And I do not want to see that happen to you. And so I'm going to ask you to pray that your heart would be soft and tender before God, that your mind would be open to a whole new spiritual truth, and that the Holy Spirit would baptize you even now as I'm preaching and teaching you these truths. So pray with me right now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray now for every single person that is listening to this, and I pray that you would soften their hearts and guard their hearts, and that they would now respond to a simple prayer and confession that they need you. I pray that you would speak with great power inside them and come with tremendous force, God of love. 
And so my friends, right now, pray this prayer out loud. Cry out to God, Lord Jesus, I need you. Help me in my life right now. Be my God. Be my friend. Save me from myself. And give me a sweet and tender heart before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Please say amen, amen, amen. I'm so glad that we had this short time really together in Romans chapter 11, which is fascinating, and will continue on in the days ahead. But let me ask you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you would like this video, that is really helpful to us on our broadcast channel. I hope you like this teaching. I hope it blesses you. I hope it brings value to your life. But if you would actually actively click on that on YouTube, that is really helpful to the broadcasting of this uh, channel, as I call it. If you'll actually subscribe to the channel so that we can continue uh, to give you updates. But more importantly, it actually, once again, helps us as a smaller channel to, to, for YouTube to actually value that. They like that when we get more subscribers. And then next, go to ranchchurch.com. There is right there on the landing page a contact button. Please click on it and let me know how I can be praying for you. And I will happily send you a Bible in the mail and some other basic Christian materials that will help you walk with God. So go to ranchchurch.com, click on the contact button, and I'll send you something uh, wonderful in the mail. Plus, we want to know how to be praying for you. Also, we, we just continue to make no apologies always, always about being big givers. The Ranch Church is big givers, big givers in missions, constantly involved in missions. And of course, we have our day-to-day -day operations, which uh, are part of our church. And so if you go to ranchchurch.com give and participate in your faithful tithes and offerings through ranchchurch.com give, that would be awesome. That would be really great as we partner together in this gospel mission. Listen, I love you, my friends, so very, very much. I wrap my arms around you. And I just love you and I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed of God this day in Jesus' name. Amen.